Hello again, everybody. It's Harry Box of the Technical Trader at thetechtrader.com. It's Saturday, September the 16th, 2023. This is the weekend webinar. Well, the markets um, had a tough day on Friday, and that may be indicative of some uh, uh, ominous stuff about to happen. We'll see. Um, we're on support on the S&P, but the pullback of a, one and a quarter percent um, has us right on right near support at 4430, 20 points above it. And should we get down below that, we can have a quick 100 points down and maybe 200 to get test the major trend channel line, which comes in here. So lateral price support and trend line all coming in about 4230, 4240. Uh, that's 220 uh, points below here. So we may be due for a 4 or 5% drop from here unless we can immediately hold the, hold the line. And we'll have to take a look at some other stocks. And NASDAQ 100 components will tell you, and you'll see some diverging patterns, but generally not, not, not as bullish as you'd like to see. Okay, uh, NDX, NASDAQ 100, similar, dropped 1.75% or 271 points on Friday. Just when it looked like it was, it broke out, it was forming a platform. It's right back to support. If we quickly drop on the 15,135.38, we're right on that level, we break a trend line as well that goes way back here. That's a problem because if NASDAQ, breaks here, we could have a left shoulder, head, right shoulder type topping pattern, and down goes Frazier. So the next target is 14.67 down here. And beneath that, 14.3. So um, very dangerous type time for the market right now, particularly because it's uh, mid-September, which could create a either quick drop or crash scenario. I'm cautioning everybody to be very careful up here. And we're, and we're likely to be trading the ultra shorts in the next day or two. We shall see. Well, it depends on what the market gives us. And part of what the problem is, the transportation and small caps do not look good. They have, with the S&P and NDX haven't broken out and up in that area, these have come down in a one, two, three, and maybe forming a wave four flag or coil or some kind of bearish consolidation. Now, if this is not a bottoming pattern, should the transportation stake out 15.1? Could probably go down at 14.56, which is the major trend line. And it's also be a one, two, three, four, five wave de decline. So that's a number to keep in mind if we are going to drop down. Small caps not doing well. And you can see Friday was a drop of about one, almost 1%. One but this uh, rollover, rising wedge, and roll back. And you can see where there's a line in here that could be. It looks like a neckline of a massive left shoulder, head, right shoulder pattern. So um, head and shoulders are not head and shoulders until they break down. If they do, we're looking at 176, 174 area for starters down here. So um, uh, unless we quickly move back over 160 uh, or 186 and then take out 190, um, you know, the IWM and transportation indices are really much weaker than what we're seeing and a negative divergence as well. And one more look at the NDX and S&P. You can see they both broke out and then are consolidating, but could be in a rollover mode. This is a dangerous pattern, in my opinion. We'll see. There will also be one big consolidation, okay, but it's also a one, two, three, four, five, fifth wave type consolidation, or wave six, actually. So and either this is five waves up or we're coming down. Or we're going to have another big wave to the upside of 4750, 4800. Now let's look at the underlying indicators and the technicals. McClellan outside is not overbought, and part of the problem oversold. I mean, and part of the problem is that um, on the upside it was very sharp. On the downside, advanced declines and up down volume aren't as bad as you think. Now that might be a positive for the market, but it's not positive from a standpoint of we're not oversold enough to create a much bigger rally, at least not yet. Now, there's always the possibility that because the pullback is much more muted in terms of advanced declines and up-down volume, that this could get up to plus 150 to 200 in a, in a fifth wave or another wave up in the market, uh, which could surprise everybody and create some short covering. If we do get if we do get a bottom, whether it be lower or from, from here, in the next few days it could create a really so strong buying opportunity for at least a snapback trend for a week or two. Okay. Um, the percentage of stocks above their 40 is 15%. Hang on a minute. And 
stocks, no, a third, I'm sorry, that's, that was a mistake. A one third of stocks are above the 40. Um, not as bad as you'd think considering how, how much the market seems to pull back, but it's not really dropped as much. So what, the, my concern is that this comes down in the you know, uh, 10, 12 range. It gets to a oversold condition down here, maybe even eight, if that does occur. And the oscillator is down much deeper, maybe 150 to 200 negative. And the VIX spikes up, well, then maybe we have a much better opportunity. I'd also like to see a big negative take in the 14, 1500 range to create a selling climax. We're nowhere near that. That's my concern. If the market's beginning to roll over, then we have a possible, not crash scenario necessarily, but a, a sharp dip could be coming. We'll find out. That's why I want everyone to keep be very vigilant. This is not a time to be casual. Make sure your stops are, at this point, probably tightened. Preserve your profits, protect your portfolio. Okay, um, now look at some of the major NASDAQ components before that. Again, the VIX is 1379, not wow. This has to be up here to be more of a, at least a 30, 34 range for the market to be back up in here where the market was oversold enough to create a much better rally. Now, down here, we're getting down to an apathetic area where there's not a lot of fear. This is a fear indicator, fear index. So that also concerns me because we need to spike, spike, spike for a couple, three days and get this up here, get this one down there, the oscillator plus 200. So we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Now, this is a, you know, yeah, so this is what I'm seeing on the, um, percentage of stocks above their 40. Only a third of stocks are above the 40. But we want to get that down towards, you know, low teens, ideally. All right, that's enough of that. Let's go look at some of the big boys, uh, the NASDAQ 100 generals. Apple is in dire straits. You have a big rising channel here, a breakaway gap to the downside, a snapback that fill that gap through the trend channel, and then a hard drop, a bounce into resistance, another pullback. And you realize if Apple drops under 172-ish, and it's only less than, three, less than three points away, this is what it's vulnerable to. Low, low 160s, high 150s. And it's really set up to, do, to get there, especially under 172. So careful, careful, careful. Apple may lead the way down if the market does break. Amazon looks way better than most of them. Now, it did pull back dramatically um, about five points on Friday, down 457, and it's right on initial minor support. But look how close it is to multi-year high. We got up to 145.86. It's only five points off the high. So, and it's still way above the trend line and above the moving averages. But a move below 138 and then 135.56 are the two support levels. That below that. And Apple dropping down as well as Amazon and the others. We'll see. Um, Google, as strong as anything on the board. What a nice chart. Well, first of all, if you look back a year ago, it based out, broke out, wedge, pop, flag. That was a one, two, three, four. And this looks like a one, two, three, four, five. So I'm not sure if this is done yet. Um, and I may have miscounted the waves. But uh, certainly at this point, if it drops suddenly, 129.75 or thereabout, and then 127 are your downside support levels. Upside targets, 145.6 and 152. Microsoft, again, a long rising channel, a spike up, a falling wedge, and a rising wedge. The rising wedge reversed on Friday, Microsoft dropping 875 or almost 2.6%. A break of this wedge, and we come down to test the lows. A break of that level, and Microsoft plunges 310 to support, followed by 3034 and 2912. Now, there's another way of looking at this. There's your adjusted trend line. And there's your parallel channel. So 
again, if we break Microsoft, this is a left shoulder, head, right shoulder potential top. That's when the market gets ugly. Microsoft especially. If it breaks one, a 311. Under that, danger zone. NVIDIA has really gotten hammered back as the AI uh, excitement really cools. You will look at AI's chart, you'll see what I mean. SMCI as well. So NVIDIA trend line breaks, consolidates, pulls back. This is a three week low. It's below or into that gap and might probably fill this gap here, just right at the gap fill right there. So either this bounces sharply right here or the trend channel, which has already been broken, appears to be, could lead to lower levels. We have a major double bottom in NVIDIA at 403. That's your next target, about 34 points below here. If it cracks, so keep an eye on that on the short side. Um, only if it gets back above 462, and I say it's reversed back up again. Netflix is looking ugly. Their subscriber data was not good. This looks like already at a neckline or below of a left shoulder head and a double right shoulder. The trend line was broken this week. Lateral price support as well. The channel bottom beckons also lateral price support. Target 380, 16 points down. Secondary support 355. None of those would shock me if we crack. If Monday comes, we start to see this fall apart on Monday. Um, and Apple and Amazon and Google and Microsoft are all doing that kind of stuff. Then there's dire straits for this market ahead of us, folks. Be really, really careful and vigilant. This is a very important week for um, the tech traders, in my opinion. Um, Meta, also very similar to Microsoft in terms of a large rising channel, a breakdown below the moving averages, and then a rising wedge above the moving average. But look where it closed Friday. This is almost an engulfing reversal bar, not quite, but it did go from 313 to 298.75 and finished under 300. Down 11 and three quarters are almost 4%. More importantly, this looks like this wedge. I have cracked on Friday. If that's the case, better comes down hard. The key support is 275.80. Initial support is 292. Right there. So um, some of these stocks look very vulnerable to me, folks, and their near-term puts could be pretty exciting in the next week or two, several of these. Don't anticipate, wait for the break. Okay, um, Tesla, a little different, obviously. It's been very strong, but this too is in a rising channel that for cracks. Yeah, and you can see we have gap resistance right there at about 281, Friday's high close to 279, so near a resistance level. A nice little uptrend. If Tesla cracks his channel, it probably come down to 250, 240, and even 230. That's where the trend line comes in. This is not as bad as some of the others. Certainly the strong ones are Tesla and Google, in my opinion. All right, um, that's a quick look at some of the NASDAQ generals and are looking a little dicey in here. Um, let's, let's take a look at the major ETS we follow and that'll tell you where we're at. The SMH, which is really a leader, dropped 469 or 3.1% on Friday and technically closed below the trend line. I want you to see this. Connecting there, there, and there, and there, and a parallel line to these. Hey, double left shoulder, a double head, and a, and a right shoulder, or a rounding top, whatever you want to call it, have this very vulnerable. And I'll tell you what, if SMH is under 143, that signals to me we're going down at 137, if not lower. But it also signals that SMH, which is a market leader, if that cracks, could lead the whole market lower. The other groups we follow are financials, which have been rather... You know, I don't know if they call it weak, but you can see that it reversed on Friday off the trend line. And so I, can, I consider this a three-wave corrective at flag. And if we crack here, it could come down at that 62, if not 58. Those are your targets for FAS 
an upside move that takes out Friday's high would be very bullish at 69 and a half. That brings me to the biotechs, which have been very weak of late. Look at the last three days of this XBI, for example. A very distinct one, two, three, four, five, and also a very distinct one, two, three, four, with the fifth wave underway, perhaps. Uh, the target would be a retest of the uh, March low, which came in at 72.44. It's about five points below here. But if it do come down, if the market comes down, this plunges into that zone. Careful, because there is some key support going back a year at that level, and it would be a fifth wave as well. So there could be some opportunities setting up if we could just come down sharply for a day or two and end this pullback debacle in the September pullback. Um, obviously, LABU, the other ETF we follow in biotechs looks similar. Let's look at this thing. This is all time ever low. This is a triple bull and therefore leverage as this extremely volatile. Uh, recently got up to 530, here we are up to 450 and we break this level, no telling where this goes. This is likely, in my opinion, a reverse split coming up. We'll see. Um, okay, so that, that completes that. Now look at oil, which has been one of the power, power groups in Wall Street. Since June, oil has gone from, the U.S. oil has gone from under 61 to over 81, 20 points, and it's broken through the decline tops on every, it's that lateral resistance here, should we get through here? My target's 90 plus 90. UCO looks the same. It's a little bit different um, energy. I like the USO better. And to complete that is Gush. As you can see, even weaker that the double bull. Um, it, when I say weaker, it just hasn't had the big run the USO has. This is got a target of 52 if oil takes off. Natural gas, well, UNG and Boyle just aren't going anywhere. Looked like they were going to run, they backed off. KOLD, they got the better chart, and that's the, the bear, the bearish ETF for in that guess. If coal should take out 63 and a half, we can get to 68. There's a double top there. He would be Thursday's low of 58 and a half. That's where you stop it. What about gold? Well, it perked up, didn't it? A pretty good week for gold but not a breakout yet. Take a look at the downtrend on GDX. Could this be a one, two, three, four? Have we got another leg coming? You would still be careful with precious metals. That's GDX, here's the Jane Nug. You see the same thing here. If this gets above 34.5, maybe we can get the third. The 40 or better for now. We also might be in this big downtrend that takes us down to 25 at some point. I'm going to wait for the breakout before I get too bullish on gold and silver. And that's what I wanted to show you. And let's get to some charts. We have some, uh, quite a few bullish charts and some new, new boxy charts. AAOY, well, it was looking great for a while, but take a look at one, two, three, four, five waves up. Fifth wave consolidation, less reliable. The market brought down the tech stocks. This broke support right there. This was a stop under 11 and a quarter. It got down to 9.0882, and it's broken. Now, it's on the trend line. It could bounce, but if it doesn't get back above 11 and a quarter and a half, we're vulnerable to six, seven bucks, folks. Be really careful with this one. Archer Aviation at the apex. Near a trend line. This is the line I want to keep in mind right there. Looks like a big coil or wedge. It's got to get over seven and a half. If it does, we can see nine and a half, ten, maybe even more. But in this market environment, a rollover here could come, come down to five and a half quickly or less. And we crack there and we're pulling back in a deeper retrace level. ACIC. American Coastal Insurance. There's a lot of junior insurance companies that look like this. It's amazing. Um, this has gone from 30 cents to nine dollars, 30 fold, and now coiling. Now I wouldn't be aggressive with it, but I wanted to show it to you. 
EHR. After testing resistance, it's come down in the falling wedge. And should it pop and take out resistance here, we're looking at 60 and 65, maybe 70. For now, though, be careful on Thursday, Friday low on the 46, and it's right there at 47. You can see 43 or more or less. I'd be concerned about this one if we broke that low. Then you're breaking the trend line, which goes way back. See it? Firm breaks through a double top. We put a swing on it. It continues to run. It's got a flag. In the middle of this kind of a market for a stock to be doing this is a great sign in terms of relative strength. My target's at 27 and 30. And now AI. And this is where all the excitement is starting to be dangerous. The stock is too popular. And usually it's not a good thing. One, two, three, and four. Now, if that's the fifth wave pullback, excuse me, fourth wave pullback, the fifth wave, if there is one, could take us to mid 40s and even high 50s. But at this point, any move that takes AI under 25 is dangerous for a move down to 20 or even 18. AMRX, beautiful rising channel from a buck and change all the way up to four and a half. It's basically more than tripled. And now it's coiling. Relative strength in this market, look at the on balance volume new highs. This is outstanding. Can it go and you know continue? If it gets to 450, 565, it could be a six, seven dollar stock. Keep in mind where support is three and a half. APLS pop pull back and popped again. We put flag. I put a, a swing trade on it. It's gone from about 38 and three quarters to 45. Um, I'm still looking for mid 50s and even as high as 68 to 70. EPP, what a beautiful chart. It's been a swing of ours for months now. And it still looks good. Currently in a flag type consolidation right there on the type one. Break out of that. I'm not going to be shocked to see 48.50. ARDX, after a long uptrend, pulled back and went sideways and based out and then broke back out again. Now it's flagging. Again, we need this one over five with energy. If you do, five and three quarters and six and a half would be your targets. Arlo, what a nice chart. Base, breakout, wedge, pop flag, pop coil, and another pop flag, and then a pullback, finally, after multiple waves up. But it held support, and now it's bounced again. Should this get over 11 and a half, 13 and three quarters, 14, 16 and a half, 17, both are targets. In the solar sector, one stock with relative strength is ARRY, with a big inverse head and shoulders, and then a pop a year ago, one year base pattern, and now it's trying to come out. It did have a negative engulfing reversal bar Friday, so be careful. The solar group does not look good, but this one stands out in that group. AUGX breaks out of a base with a breakaway gap, so it forms a wedge and runs up, then it forms another wedge and pops. Beautiful rising channel underway. Resistance is five and three quarters, your target seven and a half. AUR, similar. Um, Long decline, based, broke out, wedged, rising channel, target, four and a quarter, and five and a half. BORR, long rising channel, you can see that it bounced off that here. So your stop has to be right about six and three quarters underneath that. Target's eight and three quarters and 10. BRBR, this food company continues to trend and now flagging. Relative strength's outstanding, target is 50. Kaba, big run last year, and then multiple month consolidation coil. Popped out, re, 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 you know, pulled back, popped out, pulled back, and now it's popped again. I believe we're going to 20 on this one. Seabay, how about this? One, two, three, four, and then one, two, three. Maybe we get it four, five, and we get it up to the low 20s, 22, 23. Beautiful chart. CCJ, uranium stocks are flying. CCJ break, broke through a double top and just keeps running. Targeting 46 and 55. The other stocks in that group, let's look at them. U, 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 breaking through a base pattern. Targeting 11. U, E, C. Same pattern. Target six and a half, seven. Okay, CDLX, a tech trader swing, beautiful inverse head and shoulders here. There's your breakout, and we had to put a swing on it. 
it's more than doubled. In a one, two, three, four, five way move, it is at resistance. But your next target would be mid 20s and then low 30s. Kojin, I'm showing you this one. I mean, Cognite, I'm showing you this because it broke out and flagged me for the swing on it. We went to the target and coiled. It looked like it broke out Wednesday, but look at the negative action Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, particularly Friday. 100% stop under five now. Of over six, I think we're good to go into the seven and a half range. CLS, beautiful long term chart, overbought, extended, near resistance. Great momentum though. COUR breaking out of a base. It's the highest level we've seen since May of last year, year and a half, but it's at the top of the channel. Nevertheless, next target is 20. Kinetics. It breaks a base with a huge breakaway gap on big um, biotech news. And now it's flagging. This could be a swing here. If it doesn't break down, I would stop this one under 2690. The target low and mid 30s. Carvana, nice pop on Thursday. Punch it out. But it didn't get out over here. That high was 5719. Thursday, it reached 5680. Got pretty close. Resistance for sure is right there. Should that get through, I would look for 65 and 75. Your stop on Carvana has to be 46. TBI surged, coiled, broke out, wedging. I like it. 13 and 15 targets. DBRG, triple top breakout, then an uh, kind of an engulfing reversal on Friday, so be careful. But you know, my target remains 23.4. Beth Gangs broke out. We put a swing on it. It kept going. It hit both swing targets and it's pulled back and then bounced again. Next target is 34 and 39. Oil stock diamond offshore drilling breaking out of the base, uh, excuse me, flag and pulling back to retest. I'm targeting uh, 18 and 21. Chinese educational stock EDU and a beautiful uptrend. At a breakout last week across the double top and pulled back. But you know, provided the markets don't fall apart, this could be an interesting stock. Or if the market does come down hard, we could be a buyer in the mid 40s. But I think this is a stock that could be 60, 70. ELTK just went bonkers in May. Literally, it went from 4 to 11, came down, bounced, forming a flag or a little coil in here. Very interesting pattern. Keep an eye on this one. ETON breaks out of a long base, pulls back and tests, and it pops. But it had a very negative bar on Friday, so we'll have to see whether it holds support or not. If it does, it starts to run target near seven. FNGR has been great to us this year, here, here, and again here. But that break on Friday has me concerned three days in a row on the downside. The low initial support are right at it. It has to hold right there. Anything further than 590. Uh, and I'd be a seller. Targets are seven and a half and nine and a half. FTI, beautiful rising channel, has more to go, $24 target. Getty, beautiful base, I'm looking for a potential breakout. And look at this run going the lousy market, been going vertical every day for about seven days and about nine out of the last 10 days, the stock's been up in a lousy market. So something to watch in terms of relative strength, it has built a nice base. The targets are eight and 13. Groupon, after coming down for a long time, it breaks out here, forms a wedge, explodes, and forms another wedge. The extension target now is 15 and 19. GTEC, a vertical from a buck 65 to five, pull back sharply to 285, and reversed on Friday. Let's see if this extends. Your target's back around five, five and a half. In the oil sector, Helix Energy Solutions Group breaking out to um, multi-year highs, and there's resistance right here, going back five, six years. So we'll see if we get through it. If it does, 14 is your target. Coal stock HNRG, look, look at this rising channel. It's gone literally from 60 cents to $12, 20-fold. In a large one, two, three, four, and the fifth wave is underway, which could get this. It doubled from here in 2022. DYA. Popped out, flagged, and popped again. Now it's flagging. I like to look at this for mid 30s. Intel, uh, even though it backed off late in the week, it's a really nice rising channel underway. 
it's been, it looks like it's been accumulated. OBV looks good. If it gets to 40, your target's 44.5. IONQ came down hard for four days after reversing, making a new high. Always a dangerous sign. It's that support. I don't want this under 15 and a half. Um, targets are 19, 22, and 25 if it does reverse. IOT, Samsara, double top, or made a nominal new high and then pull back. It's on support. Stops under 26 and a half. Target 32. KNS State is biotech, had a beautiful one, two, three, and now fourth wave wedge. As we're thinking, there may be another wave coming. Looking for a retest of 21. LFMD, a beautiful run after breaking a downtrend and then formed the coil and that broke out. It's poised to pop. If it gets about five, five, about five, we can see six and seven. LI was a great swing force when it broke out here in May. It ran from the high 20s to the mid 40s and now it's coiling. Stop has to be on the 38. Target's 44, 47, and 52 if it goes. Limbach Holdings, I don't know what this is all about, but what a chart. It is pulling back now, but if it does extend 42 to your target. LTRX exploded early in the week, a week, well, a week ago, and then pulled back. Friday was a bit of a disappointment because I thought it was flagging. Nevertheless, the breakout point is right about 480, and it pulled back to 488 on Friday. Keep an eye on this one for an entry opportunity. Like the long term, Short-term base pattern is intriguing. It should have break out above that area right there. Six and three quarters and eight are targets. Lira, another biotech stock that popped and is consolidating, targeting six and a half, seven. The trader swing lights broke out, consolidated, and backed off a little. Friday was a nice pop out of the falling wedge. But it needs to get to 16 and a half. If you do that, I'd be looking for 19 and 22. Look at this chart at MDGX. Beautiful base breakout flag, pop mini flag, pop wedge. Beautiful trend, but it is back to the trend line. Probably needs to be stopped under 720, targeting 8.5 and 10.5. Marijuana stocks took off, and so did the um, ETFs MJ, MSOS. MSOX, all three rocking and rolling. This one, 300% for MSOX. More than double for MSOS and MJ, almost doubled. So keep an eye on those for setups. MNSO, beautiful biotech stock, popped out last year and flagged and then ran up. For several months, it went sideways, consolidated, broke out and flagged, and now it's running. Friday wasn't a good day for it, like it wasn't for many stocks, and there's resistance here. Support is 24. Target is 34. And then broke out Wednesday and consolidated for two days. Great looking chart. Break out of a base, retest, and go. I have to say my next target is $8. NPWR. Exploded, coiled, popped, retested, held, it's moving again. You can see Friday's action in the lousy market, it jumped 87 cents or five and a half percent. And a large wedge or coil, whatever you want to call it, a wedge, is about to break out. This could be high teens very quickly. Nutanix, tech traded swing, popped and pulled back, popped again and pulled back, it's coiling. Provided the market holds together, this is 38 and a half to 41. OII in the oil sector, very solid, targeting 29 and mid 30s. OLMA breaks out of a base, retests, holds the moving average, runs up in flags, pops and backs off to retest the trend line, and then breaks out. Forms a little pennant and it broke out on Friday. 16 is my target. ORIC backed up the last week or two, but look at the major chart and the trend line. Key support, seven and a half. Target, nine, three quarters and 11. EAY broke out a month ago, pulled back and wedge, and now it's been moving steadily higher. Your target is 18. The ETQ popped out, trended up, and pulled back. 
Here's your trend line. 24 is your target. Look at this breakout of a base coiling, narrow base coil type pattern. This one's run from a buck and a quarter, three and a quarter, 320, and consolidating. Powerful trend that could get to four, even four and a half. PHVS spiked up in December of last year, six month consolidation, popped out and flagged, and then kept going. Extension targets are 29 and a half, 35. Palantir. This one is uh, interesting. It's in a rising channel and it's coiling, but this is dangerous because it has not been able to get back above the moving average. It also could be a left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Palantir gets below 13 and a half, you're stopping it. If it pops 16 and a half, then I look for 20 and 25. KOWL is a text rate of swing, it popped out. It's been coiling ever since. There was a nice little run there, but it backed off. Technicals are turning a little negative, but the overall pattern is so bullish, I'd stick with it until and if crack 73. Your targets are 88 and 99. Quanterix breaks out of a base and is a, remains in a rising channel. The move above 27 and a half gets me 31 too. RCEL in a beautiful uptrend, it's now a falling wedge right back to support. Do not let this go under 14 and three quarters. Targets, height cleans, low to mid 20s. RCKT exploded Wednesday and Thursday, had an inside day Friday. There's a double top there. 24 and a half, 28 and a half is your target. Rely or Remedy Global, look at this little rising stock. 898 to 26, not to 27. So basically, it's tripled since January. In a rising configuration, ran up a dollar on a really negative day on Friday, and your next target is 3031. Rev group popped and flagged or coiled or consolidated in a base type pattern for three months and broke out. Last week was terrific for it. My target extension is 16. Rig in the junior oil sector, driller rig broke out of a coil and set up another flag. Keep an eye on this one. You get above. Nine, eight, ninety-nine, nine and a half, ten and a quarter, and then eventually fourteen could be had. Rivian made a beautiful trade on that there. Came down a falling wedge and popped its flag in there. Looks like it wants to edge higher. I have a target now in the 26, 28 zone, following bet 31, 32. Rhythm exploded in August. It's been consolidating and flagging for two months. Any move on rhythm that takes out. 28 and a quarter, and we're looking for 32.35. Sea drill, another junior driller. Broke out of a coil, ran up, and now it's flagging. I believe we're looking at 55 and 62 for targets. Shopify, well, beautiful rising channel, came down to the trend line and bounced from the little wedge. If it can break out of here without breaking down, I would stop under 63. Then my target is 69.70 and mid 70s. SoFi, again, I mentioned this earlier, this could be a head and shoulders top. It also might be a pop bullish platform or, and or a wedge. You have to wait to see how this resolves up or down. Be careful. Splunk, put out a tech trade swing when it broke out and it ran up to the target but backed off here. Let's see if it can hold support, which is right now about 110, 115 and 110. Any move above 125, my target's 133. PAL, that's a junior uh, junior ed Chinese educator. Um, you can see that if this gets above eight and a quarter, it's a nine and a half and eleven dollar stock. Tilray, tech trader swing, popped out, pulled back, popped again. Now it's flagging or wedging. Underlying technicals look good. Marijuana stocks look like that. That the bank ruling that's coming up in their favor should be a big boost to them, but, but be careful with this one. If it gets underneath the weekly low of 275, 78, you can move aside. But my target is three and three quarters and four and a half, three quarters. TNGX Tango Therapeutics exploded, falling wedge, and broke out. You can see resistance here. If it gets to nine and a half, twelve dollars is your target. DSAT popped out. We put a swing on it. It ran beautifully. 
and pull back in a three way correct the falling wedge. Don't at this point, I just don't want to see it underneath 16, but it might drift. If it does pop, looking for 20 and 22, 23. Tasha, breakaway gap, little flag breaks out, it does another flag. It's a one, two, three, four. Fifth wave target is five and six. Uber, hanging in there, hanging in there very well. And a beautiful rising channel. This is a former tech trader swing. The rising channel looks like that. My target is 55. ULBI broke out and popped. We put a tech trader swing on it when it broke there. It's moved from um, eight and a half to about 11 and it's consolidating. I think the next target is 12 and 14. Vista oil and gas. Beautiful rising channel. If oil continues, this is a $32 stock in my opinion. VIRT, what a dynamite chart this is. It's moved from low, low digits, low teens, 11, 12 to 40. It's flagging. Next target is 47 to 52. Wave, might have broken out on Friday, or at least it's gotten to the February high. To this level, it's a $7 stock potential. Nice chart, nice base. Weight watches popped out, falling wedge popped, pennant pop, larger coil, and then another pop, but it backed off. You can see resistance here though, and if WW gets to 12, 12, 15, the targets are 15 and 19. This could be wildfire. The US Steel, which is in play, is now in a beautiful bull pennant after a big pop. Keep an eye on this one for a takeover in the mid to high 30s. XPEV. One of our successful Chinese electric vehicle um, swings went pop from about the 11, 12 zone into the mid 20s and pulled back. It's got a little pen in here now. Retesting 23.4 and maybe high 20s could be a target. XPO Logistics unbelievably just continues to move up. My favorite transportation stock at this point. And my target's high 80s to high 90s. And finally, X Pro, beautiful rising channel, one, two, three, four, five, and that's a one, two now. And this is a three, four. I think a fifth wave could get us in the low 30s. It popped Friday, it took out resistance up 6% on a lousy day with big volume. Let's see if we get a follow through. And now some shorts, and there's some new ones I want you guys to see. We'll start off with. A and pH. Now, um, this came down and formed the bear wedge, and it came down again, and it's right on support. You see the heavy volume? If they crack this one, well, there's a good chance this stock could be in the mid 30s. This stock is very vulnerable. I would short every bounce on this one, particularly 48 and a half would be my max. AN um, came down hard and bounced from the bear wedge. I gave you a swing around there. It didn't really work, but that didn't break out either until Friday where it had a pretty bearish day. Now, if we break 148 and a half, three quarters, you can see how this could be vulnerable into the low 140s and low 130s, or if not worse than that. Also, there's your trend line. A break of that line, very ominous looking. There's your major channel. So we can see if this breaks down, they can get hammered. AOSL looks like a little head and shoulder top and bear flag. Careful on that one. Build the first horse I added because it's right on the trend line. It may have just broken it. It's on the price support. It may have broken that trend line. You can see downside technicals are deteriorating. There's some support here. In the mid-120s. But a drop could take this to 110 and even 100. BMEA came down, bear flag came down, bear flag and did it again and again. Continues to stair step lower. Looks like a $12 stock, if not worse. CPA, long uptrend. Broke down and retested it. That's a kiss back. And Friday made it a lower low. My target's 86.7. Below that, it could be even in the high 60s. Crocs, so far a successful deck trade swing. Massive top, breakdown, bear wedge. We went short. It's dropped from over 100 into the mid 80s. Friday, it dropped another 225, finishing 88.47. Uh, 
um, it, it looks like to me 84 is an important level, about 83.4 here. Then a big drop coming. I think we can see the stock in the high 60s, low 70s. DHI home builders are starting to look lousy, as right, and rightly so with interest rates the way they are. This broke on Friday. Now I have targets at 105. 99 and 95. Big sporting goods. Look at this break. Big down gap and a big bear wedge. Now, I don't know if it's going to go lower. It's a popular stock, but boy, that's a bearish store. 98 is your next target. 15 points. DOX broke on the bear wedge. This is a tech trade swing short, I believe. If it isn't, it should be. My targets are down here in the high 70s. Nitro trace, a new one, broke down from the bear flag, and it looks like it's breaking the bear flag. Should this one get underneath 45? Look for a drop to 40 and even 36. DXCM tech trade a swing, short, came down bear flagged, came down bear wedged, and really got hammered Friday. Friday losing 550. You can see it's the lowest level on this one since October. October support is down around 92, 91. And maybe we drop into the low 80s. By BE, broke key support, and it's trending lower. By below, could go below to 140, maybe even 128. FOUR broke and stopped from the bear flag. Broke down and snapped back. Careful on this one. It may, it may be coverable already. I, we're going to see if it does no follow through to the upside, it could roll over. My target eventually is 44. Another build of green brick, which we are short, came down, broke, broke the neckline, rallied back to it and rolled over. And then Friday had a bearish engulfing day, a big volume. Looking lower to me, folks. I think it tests 39 and 32. HCA, look at this head and shoulder top and break down below the neckline. Minimum target, 242, 225. HOLX, head and shoulder top, and a bear flag or bear wedge, it's breaking down. Right now, I'm targeting 69 and way down to the mid 60s. INTA also a topping pattern with a bear flag. Had a nice bounce, and that pattern is a little dangerous because if it pops out, you want to stop this one over 39. We're already cracked down below 33, and we can start to see 29.30. Now, um, INTT, very bearish looking, breaks a big trend line, forms a bear flag, comes down, forms another one underneath the support, and now it's headed lower. For me, this has to be a trend channel with a target of 13. KBH, yet another builder with a massive head and shoulder type top, big bearish engulfing day Friday. At this point, 41 2 is my target. LVS, Las Vegas. Also a head and shoulder top, breaks down and forms a bear flag. Minimum target, 45 and 42. LW with a beautiful rising channel, all of a sudden breaks down and forms a bear wedge, and then it breaks down and forms another rising bear flag. If it doesn't get above 1023, I'm looking for 93 and 85. OMC broke a topping pattern, couldn't get through it, and it's stair stepping lower. It should have break this. 74 5 range, we might see 67 and 62. PI, <clears throat> I've been talking negative for a while in this stock after this breakdown and that rising on bear flag right to resistance. Another bear flag, that was the giveaway there. It fell apart. 90 to mid 50s, a rally to resistance, very vulnerable to lower levels, in my opinion. I don't know if it's done to the downside, but it looks to me like. You might get this down in 40-42 zone. Rambus, broken trend line, is from the big rising pattern engulf and bearish engulfing Friday. If this fails here, 48 and 41 are targets. SDGR is a tech traded swing short. It came down from the bear flag, another large bear flag. It just feels like a stock that's going lower. It targets 26. SMCI, well, as good as this momentum was in this one, that sure looks like a left shoulder head and right shoulder. 
and it also had a breakaway yet to the downside of big volume. It then formed the bear wedge or flag. It broke Friday. Should this take 235 out? My targets are at 220, 195, and maybe a gap fell into a 175 range. Be really careful. This looks very bad. SYM, head and shoulder type top, bear wedge, came down, tried to bounce, tested resistance, bearish engulfing. I'm looking for 27 and a half and 23. TGLS broke down, rallied back to the neckline, and it's coming down. I'm looking for 28. TMDX broke its channel from the little bear consolidation. Test 53 and a half to take that out. You're looking at 40. And finally, Ulta Salon, which has been in a beautiful uptrend for a long time, came down to support, bounced, broke down. This is a bear flag, bear wedge. We crack this level, you're going to come down to 375, 345 or less. That's a look at some really interesting new shorts that you guys need to take another look at. Please review this video. It's a very important one. It gives you a lot of information to prepare you for next week. Make sure you do that so you are prepared. It's going to be important. For the rest of the weekend, enjoy. This is HB wishing you a wonderful rest of your weekend. And I'll talk to you Monday. Bye now.